everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Katie Bateman, the content director at She Can Code. Having a degree is no longer a requirement for getting a job in technology, so not having one shouldn't be holding you back. There are thousands of roles that don't ask for a technical degree, but it might require you to broaden your view of traditional tech roles. Now, with over 15 years of leadership experience, the fabulous Carol Howley, Chief Marketing Officer of Exclaimer, is joining me today to discuss how women looking to get into tech should expand their horizons beyond traditional roles like coding and engineering. Welcome, Carol. Hi, thank you very much, and I'm really pleased to be here today. Thank you for joining us. Can we start off with a little bit of uh, background about yourself, please? Yeah, of course. Um, so I am I work in marketing, obviously. I, I'm the chief marketing officer at Exclaimer. And for me, I really got into marketing and I suppose technology in a sense by accident. It's probably the best accidental career choice I made and definitely one that I've absolutely loved, which is always really good. Um, I went into marketing via data and research, I suppose. I started off in Best Western Hotels following done doing a huge amount of kind of research and data crunching when I was at university to fund my degree. Um, and ended up working for Best West and then got into, we started at that time, it was quite a while ago because I'm a, a little bit older, um, but we started at that time kind of going through all of the first email journeys and looking at how to intelligently talk to people. And I just found it fascinating as a way to kind of plan out what your marketing could be, what you say to people, how you convert them through a journey. And that kind of started my career into, you know, really loving the data side, but really enjoying the psychology behind marketing. So for me, it was kind of a really interesting trip into, into marketing a little bit by accident, and then ended up very quickly heading into the tech industry through Skyscanner, where I actually learned how, you know, how the tech industry worked and how to become, you know, a part of that, not just be involved in marketing. So I think, you know, it, it's such a, an exciting area and there's so many different roles across the whole business that you can go into at any level. And I think a huge amount of flexibility, which is amazing for, for women and for people who have things on in their life that maybe don't have as much time to commit to roles too. Mm. I love that you referred to that there as accidental, um, but <laughs> it was the best best move that you, that you ever made. And you touched upon it a little bit there about some of the benefits of of being working in tech. But what do you think is so special about a career in technology? Um, I think for me, it's it's just such an exciting industry. There's so much change, so much has happened in the past sort of, you know, five to 10 years within the industry. There's so many different areas, you know, everything moves around in marketing, for example, the things we were doing six months ago probably don't work anymore. There's not necessarily a degree that you can do. And I would argue that my degree in marketing probably is almost irrelevant to what I'm doing right now. But what I've learned on the job, the courses that I've been involved in, what I've learned from other people, seeing what other people at other companies are doing and, and learning from them and applying things as well. Um, and reading has been a massive kind of leg up for me in terms of where I've been going and what I've been planning. So, you know, I absolutely love the industry. There's so many intelligent, bright people and there's so much to kind of do and learn from all the time that I just find it a fascinating area to be working in. Yeah, well, that's so interesting and so accurate as well that things we worked on six months ago probably don't work anymore. And that's <laughs> yeah. how fast things move in tech and why you said it's, you know, it's such an interesting place to be because you're forever learning. Um, but in terms of, you know, what what you you study then, I mean, what sort of roles can you have in tech if, if you don't have a tech focused degree? You know, you mentioned with the pace there, how how do you keep up and what sort of roles would, would be good for you if you don't have a degree? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, in a lot of companies, there's obviously different routes that you can go into. I think the same as any business, there's so many roles you can go in and think from sort of HR administration through to kind of, you know, developer operations, quality assessment, UI, UX, growth, you know, almost everything is, is kind of a possible option. As I said, I did actually sort of business administration and marketing. And within that, you know, I did end up sort of working within marketing and tech, but I very quickly went into kind of email, into data analysis, into kind of building websites, building applications. From that, I moved into Skyscanner and I was looking after the homepage and I was looking after advertising and cross-sell, which was something I'd never, never done before and never thought about doing as a career choice. And within there, I saw for the company, there was a huge opportunity for us to change our focus and to start to look at actually, do we sell to developers? Do we start to kind of look at our B2B business? You know, how do we kind of move that across and, and then moved into things like project management. I worked on the launch of the first Alexa skill. So I started working in natural language programming. I didn't understand as much 
the developers in it, but you become very exposed and very able to do it. And if you, you know, you want to learn, there's courses available, there's the YouTube opportunity for learning, you can go into kind of some amazing marketing and also coding classes and also things like Cheek and Code can point you to so many resources and opportunities. And you can just start to kind of learn, bring yourself up. And I think that passion is just an incredible sort of um, a sort of way to get into the tech industry as well. You know, people can really quickly see that you're learning that you're kind of working in the other areas. So I guess I've kind of listed lots of areas, but you know, marketing design program, analytical operational support roles as well customer success, change management, there's so many areas that you could get into that I think if you just want to, you know, if you really want to, there's opportunities to, to do it. I'm not saying it's not competitive, though. I'm not saying it's not challenging. And I think that's always a lot of people have probably sat there saying, oh, well, it's fine to say that, you know, you've got the experience and it does go on experience. But I think having, you know, passion and a growth mentality and really demonstrating that work is a great way to sort of get into the industry. Yeah. And it, I mean, you just listed off so many different <laughs> roles there. <laughs> you know, it, it's just when once you're in the industry, I think it's so much easier, isn't it, just to be aware of, of what is available. I don't know about you, though, but when I was at university, you wouldn't know those sorts of things. You know, you wouldn't know those types of great roles that are available in any industry. So it's quite difficult, isn't it, to I, I mean, a lot of my friends I remember at university were taking degrees that they had no idea what they were going to go on to do. They just kind of thought, I need to go to university and, and, and get a degree. And I think that's a lot of students have that feeling. Um, whereas, you know, the tech industry is quite open um, to people with a, a, a broad range of, of degrees, obviously. Um, what if you don't have a degree at all, though? What if you didn't go to university? Is it is it still possible to get into the industry, do you think? I do think so. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of kind of training courses, lots of um, opportunities, whether it's sort of the, you know, you can obviously go to colleges, like there's different diplomas, there's different courses, there's an amazing amount of boot camps and coding opportunities. Um, when I was working at Sky Center, we had lots of people coming in through there was this kind of local um, supported network where people could do these boot camp and training and almost like career switching courses as well. And um, there's some amazing ones within there. There's lots of kind of other areas that you can go into you know you can go online you can look at kind of volunteering courses you can look at kind of you know um, I'm just trying to think through I know in terms of web development UX UI data I think there's some great boot camps around those that are, are on lots of people I know in our team and I asked around sort of didn't come from a direct infrastructure you know development course they very much kind of ended up doing a number of things and gaining experience and then moving across into different areas I know there's lots of great pathways that you can get into new areas, such as um, when I was at Canonical, Kubernetes was such a huge area that not as many people were as experienced in. So there's loads of courses around kind of training into that, you know, admin for kind of Azure. There's lots of courses provided by Microsoft for theirs. So, you know, I mean, that's kind of a bit more, um, I guess, developer focused, but the, there is kind of these huge range of boot camps. I know a lot of people, I often look out for courses that I think are really great. So we did a few, put a few people through the Reforge course when we're in um, Skyscanner, and I often look out for that when people's CVs, because I know what a great course it is, having been involved in it myself. You know, there's so many different opportunities you could get involved in, but it does kind of appreciate people having to do a little bit of research and a little bit of work. Um, marketing as well, well, I've also done courses with CXL, which I think are a fantastic resource. They've got hundreds of different courses. They break it up and you can do membership and also like the Growth Tribe. Also for free one, Salesforce, HubSpot, Google have fantastic training opportunities that you can get involved in and lots of them are free. And um, so you can kind of build up all those certifications on your on your kind of profile that you can put in LinkedIn as well. Um, there's also apprenticeship roles. So we do and we do offer and support apprenticeship roles at Exclaimer, but also across you know all the companies that I've worked in, there's been loads of apprenticeship opportunities with people coming in quite junior level with you know not much experience, not many kind of qualifications necessarily, but a real appetite to kind of try. So that's a great opportunity to look for. And there's lots of sponsored apprenticeship programs through, I think through colleges, through the government, and um, through schools as well. Yeah, especially those that are reconsidering their options and whether or not universities is very expensive and a very expensive yeah. uh, option um, and whether or not you you go down a different path I think it's sometimes it's that that confidence isn't it I suppose if you 
uh, if you were to enter a workplace and you thought everybody else here has applied and they have a degree, it's it's kind of just feeling like I need that confidence to go forward and and to to have that qualification. But you know, as you mentioned, it's not it's not necessarily the be all and end all. If you have other training, you might understand things uh you know differently because you went through different training boot camps for uh, um for example uh compared to somebody else I spoke to a lady the other day who said to me um she worked in product and she said really it's not about you know knowing um all the technical details sometimes she said I just need to understand how things work and she said it's my job not to actually build them and know but just to understand and I suppose even in marketing that's the same isn't it you know you're not expected to do the coding or to actually make something tick but you do need to understand how they work um and you wouldn't necessarily need a computer science degree for that would you <laughs> no definitely not I think it's just like I said that that almost like growth mentality I think is a, something that a lot of people quote but it's always with being willing and excited about learning exploring new technologies new tools like the pace of the industry there is a bit of an expectation that because you're in tech you'll be you know you'll be ahead of the game a little bit I think and I think there's that sort of slight visionary but that only really comes from the the appetite to learn and I think the passion for the industry and that's often you know what I'd look for um in interviews and I know we'll probably talk about that a bit more later but when people are coming through you know you can just see when people are passionate and excited about technology and excited by tools and you know can really sort of quote through some of the things that they've put themselves out there and they've learned or they've had a go or you know they knew that a tool was coming in so they've actually just written some videos or they've prepared some training modules and you know that sort of thing is is the best way because like you said everything changes so fast you know we didn't know what was coming in there's some incredible new tools that we're sort of taking on board that focus on kind of conversion on your website that's that wasn't a big thing you know a while ago we looked at things like optimizely and we did a b testing but we didn't do a full level of like customized kind of experience for people and there's just some there's always something new and exciting you can get involved in and you can learn and you can try out and new ideas so I think that's that for me is just the biggest kind of attractor for the industry but also in people coming into it I think you know when I'm interviewing I don't necessarily look at all the tick boxes of skills I look at what people are excited by and what they demonstrate and how they talk about it. Yes, that mindset, isn't it? When when we speak, what well, particularly with developers on here, and that the extra things that they've done and that extra learning, um, it takes quite a lot for a person to, you know, think ahead. Like you said, you always have to stay ahead of the curve in technology, um, and it's it's not something that you feel should be uh, that you do because of a chore. It's something that they do because they clearly love it and they have a passion. Uh, for that learning that those extra things you know what else should our listeners be doing to to boost their CVs and you mentioned a few great coding courses volunteering you even mentioned a few nice little things that you can do about making videos and, and and adding things like that is there anything that you've seen yeah definitely so yeah the the kind of courses the volunteering you know obviously it needs to be financially viable for people and I appreciate volunteering isn't all the time so um, you've got to do what's possible based on things but yeah there's lots of programs dedicated for you know getting women into STEM roles getting people to you know experience a different network there's loads of different networks like you know I've always looked at the She Can Code web website there's things like women in tech and diversity in tech where you can look at different things that you can get involved in there's often hackathons we ran some great hackathons with TechCrunch at Skyscanner and one of them was actually won at TechCrunch Disrupt by a 10 year old girl who admittedly did have a dad who was a developer but she was definitely pulling the strings and telling him what to do um, <laughs> it was fantastic so um, I think there's lots of people who do that who you know just do some projects I think we often look out for developers coming in that they've got their own kind of profiles on different sites like you've got kind of GitHub or GitLab you know we've got people People coming in that have got their own portfolios online or even their own website things like even just starting to post regularly on LinkedIn I think for us as marketers you need to be proactive you need to have a bit of a perspective on the industry and you know start to talk about that and just kind of that level it's not done overly well by so many people so it'll really start to get you noticed and that's a just a good way of getting in that habit I think of kind of being involved and sharing things and reading things as well because obviously you want to give your perspective so that's a sort of really good a good area I think that that we would be looking out for yeah it's interesting you, you speak about projects and hackathons there 
we've, we're starting a series of hackathons this year at She Can Code because it's something that we hear a lot. And just, just working on projects with other people, especially if you're an undergrad or you've just graduated, trying to, you know, not just be noticed, as you mentioned, there's a lot of competition, but just to, to see what it's like working as a team and to try and experience what that is going to be like when you get in the workplace. And obviously it's something extra to, to add to your CV. Um, but it's, again, it's taking it from, if you did do a computer science degree, actually implementing that into a project and using it can be something very different. Um, because as we mentioned, we don't, we don't always need that degree. Um, but and you mentioned volunteering as well, which is which is great. Some companies they offer volunteering days, don't they? I know you mentioned obviously it's not viable for everybody, which is absolutely true. Which is why some companies are trying to offer volunteering days, aren't they? Take a certain amount um, of time a year, uh, which would be a very valuable. Especially you've got to be in a company at that point to <laughs> yeah. pick that up. Yeah. Um, what about transferable skills? Uh, are they important to career in tech? I suppose there's, there's quite a few there, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. And I think in terms of what you're saying around kind of companies offering opportunities, there's a lot of companies, you know, you can go into a company that maybe isn't, you know, 100% an ideal role, but it is in the tech industry necessarily, and then look at how do you transfer across. So in my team, we've always um, had people both at Skyscanner and Canonical, actually, recently, one of the girls I worked with has moved across into a full engineering kind of role. And they've taken that opportunity, you know, they started off in marketing, for example, but that's where their passion was. So, you know, they've looked at opportunities to work with the developers to you know look at different areas to kind of move across and I think every company will offer that you know maybe you don't immediately get into the exact role that's sort of your your dream area but being involved in the industry enables you to kind of look at training and you know almost every company I've been in it that has sort of been willing to facilitate opportunities for people and um, to help them find the best use of their skills as they move through different things and so that's also um, just a slight kind of um, side route but a really good way of, do, of doing that and once you are in that tech industry you've got that experience but then you can start to kind of move to, to where suits you in the best possible way and I love yeah. to kind of say that I'll always construct a job around a person and their skills rather than necessarily have a fixed role that because every company is different and every team functions differently so yeah. I think that's often a, a great opportunity in terms of other transferable skills um it's a really really boring basic but knowing excel and knowing some basic coding and how to run spreadsheets how to analyze data do some basic crunching some really exciting vlookup formulas all that kind of basic stuff that you start to learn in school that you actually don't realize and you forget in five minutes if I haven't done a formula in five minutes I have to sit there on google and double check it and my team will laugh at me because they do it more often um but it's it's really <laughs> fundamental and it's so helpful just to have that ability to just kind of export some data look through excel do a few charts work out what's wrong with things you know and having the time to do that's brilliant I think um learning scrum and fundamentals around kind of agile and project management and you know why things work and how you can kind of plan for that project to come in is an amazing area I think I always look for people that have done scrum master courses because they're also really good at kind of coordinating resources assessing mm -hmm. kind of the projects you know how much goes into it so that's an amazing qualification to have I think um in terms of like things, clear communication skills, understanding the Windows products, as I said, what you can do with the basics to kind of get familiar with coding, you know, that's an early start into understanding things. Um, and as I said, getting some of that language is around, you know, we do work in sprints, even in marketing, we use Scrum in marketing where possible, we try and assess what's working and what isn't. Um, as I mentioned, the project management's enormous. And I think sort of effectively marketing probably becomes more of a change management activity than anything else like we're managing how we get from where we are now to where we want to be and you know what do we need to do what indicators will tell us we're on the right track how do we kind of size those projects what do we do short term what do we do long term and you're kind of assessing that balance so an awful lot really of sort of change and project management I think is a massive area um and I guess for me, as you move up, learning kind of people and, and leadership skills, I think the nerd mentality is, is great. And there's an awful lot of people who, as you say, you know, really, really amazingly qualified, like good at their job and so brilliant. But actually, all awful lot of work is talking with people. It's managing teams. It's liaising. It's understanding you know, how to take a balance when people disagree. It's understanding how to manage differing opinions to end up with the right result. 
understanding that projects are going to fail a lot of the time and being able to assess, you know, why has it failed? What could we do better? How do we improve? And being able to demonstrate that's a massive opportunity for, for people. And you can do that from anything, you know, even projects with friends or school projects, but it's actually that awareness of sitting back and thinking, you know, how, how do we do this better and how do we kind of improve for the future? So being able to demonstrate that, you know, doesn't necessarily have to be an in-work example, but that's a great area as well. Yeah, and all things that you can't learn from a computer science degree no. <laughs> um, or, or any degree. You know, there is that baptism of fire, isn't there, when you leave university and you go into your first role, mm -hmm. and whether it's related to what you studied or not, and you suddenly realise what the workplace is like, what it's like working with a team. As you said, even things, you know, to do with failure and things don't always go right. And, you you know, how, how to... To deal with that and um, how, how to deal with colleagues, maybe some awkward colleagues. They don't give you a rule book on that at university, <laughs> do they? You know, no, no, like, definitely not. Here's how to deal with everybody in the workplace. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, at all. Sometimes the, the problem with that, though, is, you know, I know a lot of companies now are taking off of their job advertisements, aren't they, that they, they don't require a degree or they've even lowered, um, you know, it used to be sort of a first and then a, a two one. Some are not even asking for degrees at all. And I think it just it really turns people off, doesn't it? I think women in particular, we, we've all heard several times about women if they don't meet a lot of the criteria of of the job description, they they won't go for it. And especially if it says a degree, you know, you would just quickly rule that out, wouldn't you? Just think, nope, I'm not even not even going to apply for that. No, absolutely. And I think it can be really intimidating. And for some people, especially if you don't have a degree, I think, you know, I, to be fair, I didn't actually want to do a degree. My parents forced me. <laughs> 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 Another time I kind of caved, I probably wouldn't have done now, but, you know, I've ended up where I am. But yeah, I think, you know, people who haven't been through that route do feel maybe a bit of kind of, you know, oh, well, I can't do it because I haven't got that degree without necessarily knowing that actually probably what they've got is as good, if not better, bringing that experience and that work life, you know, balance and that ability to deal with people and having managed people and you know, maybe even balance budgets a bit better in that sense. It, you know, all of that is yeah. such an incredible amount of kind of, I guess, you know, sit, I think that's the hardest thing. And I, you often forget when you sit back and you prepare for interviews, I think gives you a really good opportunity to actually sort of ring, go through the things that you've done that you probably just passed over and glossed over and mm -hmm. start to think, well, actually, what did I, you know, what did I input into that? And, you know, how did I start to build that together? And it gives you a really good view of actually, you know, what your skills are. And, and that's something that I always try and encourage people in my team to do is to keep a running track or make a Trello board of, you know, these are the projects I've worked on, this is what I did, this is what the results were. So that they're, ever, they're ever feeling kind of, you know, what did I contribute or coming to the end of year for reviews, it's great to have those examples available, but it also helps you, as I say, in your career to kind of say, well, you know, actually, you know, I did this or I project managed this, but the, this didn't go as well. And it can help you highlight opportunities for your own development development too yeah oh that's actually a great idea just making some sort of record of of the things that you do throughout the year and and, and how they went and even mentioning there even if they didn't go well still mm. incredibly interesting because um, I wanted to ask you about uh interview tips do, do you have any interview tips should should you share those, <laughs> those things you know that even the failures no absolutely I think definitely and um I think one basic thing, lots of people that if you're competing, lots of people have started building out portfolios of their work and, you know, especially creative roles, people will showcase their skills. I think, you know, I know our dev team, I ask them what they look for and they say that they love seeing CVs that have got a public GitHub link that, you know, are kind of talking about things that they do outside of work in relation to coding as well, how they kind of, you know, do other things. It looks really good if you can contribute to open source projects, you know, anything that you can do that's obviously free and the ability to kind of, um, input that any kind of passion project that you do you know it's fine to do the work and get paid for it but it's also what you do in your free time that kind of shows passion I think for things as well and be able to bring that out in interviews is really good um, there's lots of kind of courses where you can mop up mock up things like campaigns or a website you, know, you can use Canva for example to mock up things to kind of show people what it be um, one basic thing that's really boring 
do your research on the company, there's always going to be someone who'll ask you a really tricky question that's something to do with, you know, what do you, what do you, what's your view? I always ask people, you know, what's your assessment of our, you know, our approach to demand gen? And that will have taken them to have actually built and, you know, built a view. And I love to ask people about, you know, what's their most relevant campaign example that they've done recently, you know, what they did, how they went through it from ideation through to the results, you know, all of that side of things. So people, you know, interviewers are getting better and better at asking questions, but also, you know, they are looking for that opportunity to give you a chance to demonstrate your experience. You just have to prepare um, and go through. So I'd always prepare, you know, think of you can Google lots of practice questions. I'd happily send some practice questions if it's helpful that I would ask people um, and just kind of practice your your answers. I always go through, you know, what's my biggest failure? And like, you know, what was the situation? What was the task? What's the example? How did I how do I do it? What did I learn from it? You know, what's the kind of an example of a project that failed? You know, like, you know, what failed? Why did it fail? What did you learn? How do you improve? Should you have done this better or that better? And starting to kind of just think through those examples helps you kind of come with a really prepared role. And I'm not saying kind of over prepare and have everything scripted, but I think just knowing those examples off by heart, because you can even transfer them over if you know you've got six or seven great examples, you can use them as an example of failure, an example of success, a project that was delayed, a way of working with people differently. So all those questions come up all the time. Um, try to think if there's anything else. Um, yeah, I think that's the main things and just the real examples of what you did and, you know, be confident saying, you know, I did this and it drove these results or, you know, I was really proud of this and, and give it that sense. And also, I guess, demonstrate comfort working with people in teams, like examples of leading teams, how you related to people. You know, it's often lovely to kind of give examples of how you supported other people and brought them on as well. Um, so I think that's the they're the main things I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, and, and and the word there you use is, is, is describes it perfectly. Demonstrate, just demonstrate what you're good at or what happened, or you know, trying to even with the failures, like you said, you know, just turning them into a positive um, instead of you know sharing your failure and saying, well, this is what happened. I fell out with everybody, <laughs> I threw my entire team under the bus because it was their fault, and <laughs> I'm leaving the company. As long as it's turned into a positive. <laughs> As you said, it's, you know, just, just sharing those things, because I think when you're interviewing somebody, you know, the reality is every day doesn't go smoothly at work. And sometimes things happen. And it's just how, how you, as you said, demonstrate how you deal with those um, mixed in, obviously, with all of the other positive things that, that you're doing. Um, do you use any resources that, that you think, you know, could help people get ahead in tech? You mentioned some great tech courses already but are there any networks or, or podcasts or books yeah so um podcast wise I love there's loads around marketing obviously I kind of follow more marketing ones I suppose than developer based ones so probably not the best person on that but lots in terms of like marketing um there's a lady who is the CMO of Drift called Trisha Gelman who does a fantastic podcast around kind of running marketing teams there's the the one that's run by Chris Walker who's um quite a famous kind of LinkedIn demand generation person his podcast fantastic the Cognizant team do a really great podcast that I really enjoy listening to um I'm trying to think there's one called Pivot which I really really enjoy which is a bit more kind of generalist tech and leadership so anything around tech marketing you know revenue marketing sort of sales sales led revenue generation all of that side of things I find really interesting and fascinating um I think you can just learn a huge amount from kind of going through some of those those kind of industries and looking at kind of communities there's a great community called demand curve there's one that i'm a member of i think you have to be a cmo but it's a cmo coffee club where people share ideas pavilions an incredible network that we sign all our marketing teams up to where they get to learn a huge amount and um, there's one called marketing i think mops professionals which is really great for sort of technical and um, marketing operations people that i also follow um so that, to be honest, lots like, and I'm always encouraging my team to kind of learn more, to read more. I've got a huge range of books that I bother people about reading. Um, in terms of like new managers, there's an amazing one by a lady who was one of the first sort of her first experience of managing was at um, Facebook called Julie Zhu. I think it's called The Making of a Manager or something like that. I encourage my team to read things around culture. So like Daniel Coyle's Culture Code is a great way of helping people understand actually the impact they have when they come to work every day and how they relate to people and how they start to kind of 
facilitate that that great team and that great dynamic that that makes them happier at work as well um so in short I think you can never stop learning and reading and expanding your knowledge and learning how to better manage people and better manage yourself um, mm. and skills point. again that are far beyond your degree and whatever yeah. it was that, that you chose and that that again that that feeling of when you first become a manager and all the things that you need to learn and uh, thought that you knew until you start managing real people and they have opinions. <laughs> exactly. And um, I joined a, a network called Section 4, actually, which do really good business um, courses. And I really, really enjoyed that. Last year, I did one on, um, it's kind of build as kind of MBA quality business education. I did a really great brand strategy sprint, which was sponsored by a lady who, um, I forgot the name. I think it's All Birds the Trainers, and she talked through all the brand examples of how she did it, which is a consumer brand. But actually, I learned loads of stuff from looking at different ways to approach things. And um, so, I'm definitely a, a massive advocate, as you can tell, of like learning. And I, I mean, I find it exciting. So, you know, it's it's easy for me. But you know, just learning and always looking to experience and you know expand your skills is a great a great way of doing things. Yeah, yeah, and. To end today, do you do you have any advice for graduates or, or newcomers to, to the industry? Yeah, I think I probably have to refer back to like the learning, but being able to kind of talk through, you know, I always, one question I always ask is, you know, what's the, the most recent thing you've read? Obviously, I'm a passionate reader, but you know, it could be a blog, it could be a website, it could be something that you've learned or even something, you know, in, in sort of a real life example that shows a passion for sort of expanding your knowledge and doing more. So I think being able to, to point at things that you've learned or courses that you've done or you know things that you found fascinating or you know even in the tech industry there's so many changes and different ways of businesses growing so that's a great opportunity to kind of demonstrate your skills and you know look at the news look at what's happening in the world have a perspective on you know what's impacting in the industry one of the best um interviewees that I interviewed at Canonical actually came on and she was interviewing to be fair for her partner marketing position but she had a, a an amazing perspective on like the changing nature of like the cloud and how people are moving to the cloud and actually a great perspective around sustainability issues with regards to moving to the cloud and I just she was fascinating and she wasn't the most experienced but just that passion and that interest you know for me was just a huge a huge kind of positive for her and the other thing is around I guess networking do your research into the communities yeah. ask other people what they do who they they talk to you know the amount of resource I've got from the CMO community coffee club which is kind of um a great network is just enormous you know you can go on there there's people who will offer you advice they'll tell you things they'll share the reading that they've got you know share perspectives of things they're going to do give you advice you know you can ask for sort of mentors as well which is a great opportunity and I think another thing is sort of adopt mentors through your career maybe don't necessarily ask for mentorship because sometimes it, it feels like a, a a time involvement for other people but what I've done is kind of kept in contact with people that I've found you know really inspiring or that have done something that I feel really well and then you know you had the opportunity to sort of say to them you know actually how would you do this have you considered this you know what's your perspective on this challenge that I've got and you start to build up that amazing network of people that you can sort of you know stand on their advice and experience whenever you need to which I found um, for me was a really really great thing to do and as I said I think just passion and, and interest just stands out a mile away. Yeah and just having that that relationship where you can say should we meet for a coffee or a chat instead of you know you've just met somebody um might not even be in person nowadays and you say would you like to be my mentor as you say it can you know they might think oh can I actually commit to that but you're right just actually building um strong connections with people just naturally means that you have great people around you to to help you when when you have a question um Carol, I'm so sorry, we're out of time already. Thank you so much for, for chatting with me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. No, thank you very much. And I hope it was helpful. Thank you. And thank you for everybody listening. As always, uh, we hope to see you again next time.